so an actor <laughs> is saying his lines, yeah. and then out of nowhere, he just starts singing. Yeah! With what happens when you put a 16th century story on a 21st century stage? We're gonna find out today. Yellow Cab's hot dog stands the Empire State Building. When it comes to New York, there are some things that create this city's experience, and Broadway's theater district is one of them. Iconic musicals like Phantom of the Opera, Lion King, and Mamma Mia have been attracting people for decades with their colorful costumes, over-the-top dancing, and beautiful music. And now there's a new show in town that everyone's dying to see. But don't let the name fool you. We're checking out Something Rotten. Something Rotten has been nominated for 10 Tony Awards, including Best Musical. It's also been named as Broadway's funniest musical comedy in at least 400 years by Time Out New York. With an award-winning cast, including Brian Darcy James, John Sirianni, and Christian Borough, you can expect it to be fun for all involved, the audience and the cast and crew. I've never been in anything like it, seriously, never been in anything like it. I've never laughed so much in a rehearsal process. Um, it's a lot of old friends coming together, a lot of very funny people, <laughs> like Brian. <laughs> He's a real cut up. <laughs> you know, characters and great music and great dance, everything you want in Broadway musical. Set in 1595, Something Rotten is all about creativity, struggle, and family. The musical is about the Bottom Brothers and their difficulties in the theater arena while competing with the latest craze, William Shakespeare. While it's a 16th century story, the musical has ties to contemporary and classic pieces like Avenue Q, Chicago, Cats, and Les Miserables. Even if you've read all of Shakespeare's work, there's no telling what's in store at this unique show. And I think that uh, because this is so well written and because it is so full of life and so full of joy, that we simply have to come up on stage and, and say the words and sing the songs that are so great and so well done and so well uh, presented on paper that bringing it to life is our joy, but it also is, is um, you know, we're basically doing what's already been done by the, by the writers very delicate, but uh, the costumes are the most beautiful costumes in the world, I think. They're just, you know, each girl has eight layers underneath, so, you know, costume-wise, they really did an amazing job of making that light enough that they can bounce around and they can move, but you still have the integrity of it looking like Elizabethan England. I think audiences come in and expect to see a lot of puffy pants and pointy leather boots, but they end up uh, seeing, what would you say? It's the opposite of puffy pants and pointy leather boots. Well, there is a lot of anachronistic <laughs> behavior that's happening I use on, that word. on stage that is not necessarily representative of the, of the 16th century. So right off the bat, you have people acting in a contemporary way, uh, telling contemporary jokes that, um, you know, that in and of itself, the contrast of those two things is funny. I feel like that is literally exactly what I said. I have a feeling that was the case. It's a true Valentine to theater, to Shakespeare, to musicals. But at its heart, it's got a great story about a family and what it means to be good to your family and what it means to be true to yourself and what it means to be honest, which is, you know, that's universal stuff. No doubt. With overnight success comes challenges, and Something Run has its own special kind. Uh, you're constantly reworking the show to find out how it works best. And so in that four or five week period, a lot of parts are moving. So you can't ever really get too comfortable, too attached to things that you've been rehearsing for the last four or five weeks. This one was extremely fast paced, changes every day. Um, I have no idea how everybody kept up with all the changes. Uh, Brian and I uh, stand behind like a wall that opens before the show, so we're standing there together during the opening number. And he uh, said to me the other day, um, I've been in 12 Broadway shows and I've never been in a hit quite like this. Really? So, <laughs> um, yeah, it's crazy. Now I take a trip to the place where the magic happens. So without costumes, the production would not be possible, and these are hard to miss. What do we have going on here, John? Well, my I, have, I wear one costume the whole time. I'm pretty lucky. Yes. Um, <laughs> Check out how heavy this oh, is. Oh yeah, super heavy. This is not a little light costume. No, no. This is some serious material here. Yeah, and they all I guess they're all like the real deal because you can tell if they're not made of the real material when, when you're watching the show. You would get this feeling like something's not right about that. That's what the costume designer told me. He said, so everything's heavy, as heavy as it would have been. Stage left. I'm gonna stage take, left, okay. Yeah. I'm going to take you onto the stage where they've done the preset, 
and it's the preset for the opening number, which is called Welcome to the Renaissance, which is kind of a total rock and roll. And this is a legendary theater. This is where like the King and I started in the 50s, and, and Oklahoma in 1940-something, 43, I think, and, and Hello, Dolly in the 60s. I mean, this is a legendary place. It's the St. James Theater. It's like 16 or 1,700 seats. It's, isn't it beautiful? I mean, this is an iconic spot. It's a great spot. No doubt. Something Rotten is amazing. I love how it's a classic story told in a contemporary way. I'm also digging how Shakespeare's character is like a rock star. It totally gives me a new feeling on the acclaimed playwright. As we've seen today, Something Rotten is nothing like the show's name suggests. It's full of creativity, history, and exploration. And trust me, you can leave the Rotten Tomatoes at home. Reporting from New York, I'm Christy Clemens.